Hi, and welcome to week two of Accelerated Computational Linguistics. So this is going to be one of the more theoretical weeks of our course. After week two, we're going to mo work mostly on natural language processing and a little bit of machine learning. But this week, we're going to study the foundations of the whole edifice. We're going to study how to model a human language through rules, like the programming rules that we usually use. Uh, can it be done? Is it possible? We're going to study a kind of uh, a series of abstractions called automata, and we're going to study something called the Chomsky hierarchy, which is a description of formal grammars and how they can be used to describe human languages and computational languages as well. So in general, we're going to try to figure out if it is possible to model all of the sequences of words and sounds in human language using rules in a computer. And so in order to, to do that, let's start with thinking about human language as a system of rules. So human languages are systematic. Indeed, they are made up of rules and, and of reoccurring patterns, things that we see again and again. So if you're in a class trying to learn a language, your teacher is probably going to show you how the sentences of the languages of the language are built. So if you're learning English, for example, you will learn that first you have the subject, the person who does the action, Jane, and then you have the verb, Jane eats, subject verb. Next, the teacher will show you that there are sentences in English like Jane eats pizza, the subject, Jane, the verb eats, and then the direct object, pizza. A direct object is something that the action is done to. So what are we eating? The pizza. The pizza is a direct object. So in English, our sentences should be subject, verb, subject, verb, direct object. We cannot scramble them. For example, eats Jane is not a good sentence of English. It's verb, noun. Something like pizza Jane eats, is not a good sentence of English either. This would be the direct object, the subject, the verb. Other languages can say this, but English really cannot. So all of the, the pattern subject, verb, direct object is a pattern that will reoccur time and again. And indeed, um, we could try to describe, use that pattern and all of the similar patterns and turn them into rules so that ultimately we could have a massive description of how English works. Let's look at that uh, that sentence more closely. N here's me, here means noun. A noun is an object, a thing, a place, a name. And V means verb. A verb is an action, like to eat, to dream, to walk. So we have the sentence, Jane eats. In this sentence, Jane is the subject. Jane is a noun. And the verb is to eat. So maybe English sentences are noun, verb. And this could help us generate many other English sentences. Indeed, we could make a semi-formal description of an English sentence as one noun and one verb. Maybe we can expand on that description. We also have sentences like Jane eats pizza. In Jane eats pizza, we have a noun as a subject, a verb, one verb, and a noun for the direct object, pizza. It's the thing that we're eating. So look at some of the regularities that we have here. The sentence always begins with a noun and with, a, with one noun. So maybe the first part of an English sentence is one noun. These sentences always have one verb. So maybe we need one noun and one verb. And then the sentences vary on whether they can have a direct object. Sometimes they are zero nouns, like in Jane eats, and sometimes they are one noun, as in Jane eats pizza. So maybe the formalization of these sentences is one noun, one verb, zero or one nouns. Let's try to see if we can have uh, more sentences. We have Jane eats, Jane eats pizza. How about Jane eats ice cream? Here, the subject remains 
one noun, the verb is one verb, and then the direct object can be two nouns, ice cream. So now we have that our English sentence can be one noun for the subject, one verb, and then zero, one, or two nouns. It can be three or more, actually. It could be uh, something like Jane eats chocolate ice cream. So it could be one, zero, or three nouns. Um, it could be Jane eats Vermont chocolate ice cream. Zero or four nouns. So in general, an English sentence maybe is one noun, one verb, and zero or more nouns for the position of direct object. Let's bring another sentence into the equation. Jane Smith eats pizza margarita. So look at how this changes our subject. Now we have two nouns, Jane Smith. Maybe the subject is one or more nouns. It could be Jane Smith, Watson, for example, one, two, three nouns. But it always needs to be at least one. For every sentence that we have seen, there's always at least one noun in the subject. There's always one verb, eats, and there can be zero, one, two, or more nouns for the direct object. So we could formalize the description of this sentence as of these sentences as one or more nouns, one verb, zero or more nouns. This is a regular expression. This is a, this, a kind of structure that we studied last week. An English sentence would be one or more nouns, one verb, and zero or more nouns. So look at how a regular expression is describing the syntax of English sentences. And we could use this to generate hundreds, thousands of new English sentences. Indeed, we managed to turn one aspect of human language into a formal rule. At least one noun, one verb, zero or more nouns. And these can describe things like Jane Smith eats pizza margarita. So maybe with enough time, with enough effort, we could find one big regular expression that described every sentence of English. We could find a regular expression that described every sentence of Spanish and so forth. And in general, we could then model English as a sequence of symbols, as a deterministic sequence of symbols that tells you first I need a noun, then I need something like a verb, then I need something like a noun again. Indeed, um, we can describe language as rules, rules that order the way that sounds interact, the way that words appear in a sentence. So maybe um, all of human language could be modeled like this, like a sequence of symbols and the order in which they appear. This is the question that we're going to be studying this week. Is it possible to model human language like this? And the tools that we're going to be using to study this kind of ordering are a generalization of regular expressions and a kind of abstraction called an automaton, plural, automata. Thank you.